being able to determine where something's taking place and, and uh, discriminating one location from the next on the fence, pretty much it all boils down to is, uh, you know, your CCTV field of view, right? Because we're not assessing the fence system based on a uh, guard getting in his golf cart and driving out to the fence. We're assessing the fence system based on an alarm happens, a camera turns and looks within less than a second, and it's up on a monitor with a map saying something's happening here, look at me, right? The MicroPoint system allows you to effectively shrink your zones without increasing the quantity of equipment. Does it make sense to have a 300 foot zone or a 50 foot zone? Which would, which would you guys prefer? 50. 50 foot, right? Everybody wants a more defined zone. The reasoning behind that is, uh, it's a uh, 200 foot zone. Uh, it's easy enough to detect a man sized object on a monitor. Half that to a 100 foot zone and maybe it's now that, uh, able to detect movement. Maybe now you can tell, hey, that guy is doing something to the fence. And then if we half that, now we can say, okay, what's that guy with the orange beard and the green shoes doing cutting the fence? To visualize that, there's a guy out there 200 feet from our camera. You guys see that little speck? Kind of hard, right? Half that. There's a guy out there with his foot on the fence and a tan shirt. Half that again. Now we see a guy in a short sleeve shirt with brown hair. He's got his foot on the fence. That guy's climbing the fence and trying to intrude on the site. So bringing all of the characteristics of these fence systems, these buried cable systems together, um, allows us to shrink the zones, have a more reliable system, more cost-effective application. What's going on with these signs over here? There are different distances. They could be possible distances that someone would need to detect something or okay. see something. Mm -hmm. So we got range distances here. So distances and light are gonna help us uh, determine how these cameras perform. I'm looking forward to seeing how not only the cameras perform, but to give me a sense of what camera to select for what application. Dory, correct. Stands what does that stand for? Detect, observe, recognize, and identify. Obviously, with these ranges that we have here and the different camera technology that we have, we will be able to tell at, let's say, 100 feet whether we can detect or identify, which is on the other side of the scale. Correct. Yep. And what what do we what is used to determine that? Uh, the amount of pixels per foot, and depending on what you're trying to see, that will determine how many pixels you need. Correct. So if I want to identify somebody at 75 feet versus just detect them, maybe at 250 right. feet, there's a difference. Different there. amount of pixels right. required. So, right. and that's going to get into what type of uh, resolution, resolution you need, yep. which is how many pixels. So, um, uh, you know, it sounds very complicated, but I guess at the end of the day, it goes back to what we've always done, right. the basics of video. What are you trying to see? Exactly, yep. And that's, uh, this is gonna help us do that. So yep. I'm looking forward to it. This is gonna be fun. Yeah, it will. Yeah. So as you can see, we are farther along in our testing procedure tonight. Uh, this is where it gets most intense. It is completely dark out here. Our field, which was very illuminated before, uh, now complete darkness. So we see nothing out here. And this really allows us to determine how well these cameras perform. So now when we apply Dory to this situation, we are interested in what this camera can see with regard to detection, observation, recognition, and identification in this very low light environment at our distances that we have measured here. So we do have some very low light performing cameras, but again, low light. We will use our infrared illumination to provide light onto the scene and still see how we can accomplish what level of that Dory classification. This has really enabled us to determine what camera performance is required to meet which application. And this is information that we're gonna to use to solve customers' problems and provide them the cameras gonna, that's gonna meet the expectation uh, and provide the, the usable video. So we'll continue along with the testing here. We're gonna start doing some infrared illumination in our scene to see how that affects the very, very low light scene as well. So we're moving along nicely.